Welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. It is Thursday, August 1st, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, and joining me this evening to review the best and worst of gaming is Andrew Cooper. In the digital flesh. What's going on, buddy? Your house looks a little bit uh, I cleaner. It. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Last time I was on here, I had to crop my camera in really close, and you're like, why is this so zoomed in? And then I zoomed out, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, this is kind of the uh, throw everything in room when we're cleaning the house. So, did you clean up everything um, that was on camera and just like push it to the side, or did yeah, you? Yeah, it's all uh, right over there. <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. Yeah, actually, so I turned on, I turned on uh, OBS and put it on my camera just so I could see what you could see <laughs> in the camera frame, and then I just shoved it all over to the side. I'm. I may have. I had do have some chaos going on over in these corners that you can't see. So all my consoles that are hooked up that I might potentially want to stream from that corner is uh, my fiance's favorite corner in the house. Well, I, I even have a different angle of you. Looks like I can see a bottle of vodka or something. Sitting yeah, there. yeah, my laptop, <laughs> so you can actually see me. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't clean that up for you guys. So. I get a nice side profile. <laughs> Uh, this is the interactive video game podcast from HorribleNight.com where we post our questions of the week every week on Facebook and our live chat responds to them, sends us their answers, and Coop and I talk through our own answers. But before we get to that, uh, what's been going on elsewhere, Coop? Man, my car. Not my car, my wife's car. <laughs> um, she got in an accident a couple months ago. Um, it wasn't really it a bad. It was a accident. couple months ago. It was. It was early June. Actually, no. It was the end of end of very end of May. Um, she didn't hit anybody. But somebody in front of her slammed on her brakes, or slammed on their brakes, and she swerved to avoid them. But there was a curb right there, so she basically bashed into the curb really hard, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it popped the tire and broke the rim. Um, but it, that's kind of all you could see on the surface. So we took it in. And, you know, insurance being insurance, they're just like, oh, yeah, you need a new tire and rim. So that's all they paid for. Dealership fixed it, just gave it back to us, and then it started making funny noises. So I took it back, and then they fixed, like, another $800 worth of stuff. And they're like, oh, it's all fixed. And they gave it back to me, and it's still making different noises now. <laughs> um, it's like they're not even test driving it after they fix anything. So I took it back a third time, and they've had it for two weeks now. And they estimated like two days worth of work. So I finally called them yesterday and they're like, yeah, we've been having problems with it. Or uh, we can't figure out where that noise is coming from. So we just took it over to the Chevy dealer today to look at it. Which it, it's at a collision center right now, which is at their Nissan dealership. And I was like, oh, so I have a Chevy. And you waited two weeks to take it to the Chevy dealership to have it fixed. <laughs> Makes so, sense. Yeah. So that's a big pain in the ass. I hate cars. Yeah. Yeah, just, that's just what for I've been the record. Doing. For the past two months now, and what what stinks is every time they miss something, when I take it back, it takes about three or four days for them to get approval from insurance to actually work on it again because they want to make sure they get the money before they do anything. Yeah. So it's it's always at least a week, even if it's only a day's worth of work. So my advice: don't buy cars, don't get into wrecks if you buy cars. Yes, don't wreck cars and don't take them to. Andy Moore Chevrolet in oh God, Indiana. Just, <laughs> <laughs> dropping names. Dropping names. <laughs> um, I'm sure he's watching right now. He's like, oh, snap, hold on. We do. We, we, we go deep into the local car dealerships <laughs> with our audience. Seriously. So we finally so lost yeah, one. Legend, don't take your car <laughs> to Indianapolis. All of our European view- viewers, this hits, hits home for them. Um, <laughs> I've... We just breezed through the um, the new Netflix show, Orange is the New Black. And I think you watched a bit of Weeds, right? Um, I watched a couple seasons, one maybe? episode, I think. Oh, maybe not. Um, yeah, no, I I don't know why I, did, I didn't get into it. Oh, I yeah, I mean, the show ended up being terrible by the end of it. But uh, yeah. it was good those first couple seasons. But anyway, I've talked about this a little bit on previous shows, but I've... At that point, I'd only seen one episode, 
And this is my favorite, like, Netflix show so far. And um, Me- Megan kind of liked, she really liked House of Cards when it came out, but this one just, this show hit us from episode one, and then I just breezed through the 13, of the 13 episodes and kind of love what they're doing when they unveil a new show and just give you a season at a time. I think it's just super smart, and um, this is definitely the one to check out. I don't know. It's... Nice. It's just all about um, a a lady that's kind of living a normal life, and then she gets sent to prison for something she did ten years ago, uh, dealing drugs, and uh, so it just picks up with her her life going into the prison, and all the characters on the show on the show are fantastic. And nice. um, is it their newest show? Yeah, yeah. So I think it just came out a couple weeks ago. Okay, um, yeah, I hadn't heard of that one yet. I started watching House of Cards, and it was pretty good. Yeah, I need to finish it. I mean, all of them have been quality. I think this is like their fifth show. They've all been, they're all, they've, they're making a case for keeping Netflix nice. around. So um, I'll be interested interested to see. I think this one's been the one that's most been most well received. Um, I'll be interested to see like how season two of these shows go and and like if they start to get, you know, more of their movie deals back that they, you know, Netflix is actually kind of fading there for, for a while. But um, I think they're, original series are are better than than i expected so uh, but yeah if you had to pick one of their five this is this is the one to check out so nice yeah i'll check that out all right video games uh games. game of the week coop you, you have to pick one one of these two from the same I'm gonna, dude i'm gonna go with uh super meat boy all right it's been my game of the week um i got really obsessed with it on xbox it it was one of my hard challenges to try and hundred percent the game, which I don't think is possible, but <laughs> I'm gonna try it sometime. Um, and I actually got pretty far. I I know I at least got everything in the first world, maybe the second world too. Yeah. Um, but then I stopped playing it and you know moved on. And you I, put a lot of hours into. I did into put this. a ton into it. Um, but then I so I just put it back on PC. Um, I had a PC for a while, but I never played it, and I. You know, kind of getting that itch to to go through and play it again. And you know, the, we're we're doing the leaderboard war already. I went through and set a bunch of high scores, and then you went through and beat them. So I've been <laughs> stuck on world stuck on world one, trying to beat them again. Which a few of them, it looks like we may have got the fastest time because we're all tying on them. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the the competitive side of that is is hitting me right now. So I'm having a good time with it. It's such a great game. It's it's kind of. I wrote about it a little bit earlier this week in the fact that I was so ready to already label it a classic game. Like, I play it like I do um, my old NES games. Like, it's it's there's a nostalgia trip, and then there's that competitive side of it for, for the ones I really care about. And, um, you know, yeah. the game's, game's barely... How long did that come out of this? Was it 2011? Was it three or four years old now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm thrown off because, like... We've been watching, and we'll talk about this later. We've been watching Indie Game the movie, and like everything they talk about is the game's been out for two years, but that was filmed like two years ago. So yeah, like the yeah. So um, it came out in 2010. 2010, October yeah. 20th. Wow. Yeah, that's funny. Um, that, that, I don't know why that all of a sudden popped up for us. Well, I do know why. It's Indie Game the movie. So yeah, um, but uh, but no, it has one of my favorite soundtracks. Soundtrack is fantastic. The game. The game just plays so smooth. It's like I, it's hard, but you feel like you're in complete control almost when you're you're playing it. So it's it's just done really well. <laughs> I uh, you kind, of, you kind of feel like you're in complete control. Yeah. It um. But uh. And, and then I, I, it got me in the mood where I dug up one of our my favorite horrible night clips when we made Josh play through the Dark World stuff. Um, but that that game just never feels old. I can, you know, I. Went to play it last weekend and thought I would sink like ten minutes into it, and a, an hour went by really quickly. And I was only playing like six or seven levels, so um, I'm I'll be curious to see how long we yeah. stick with the leaderboards there. Um, I was actually well last week. Um, Steam put up for sale the Puppy Games uh, Ultra Bundle, I believe they called it, which is um, all of their all of their games, which started with I think Re- Return of the Titans and Ultratron and uh, Titan Attacks, and when that went on sale, I was like, oh, I haven't played one of these 
one of the puppy games games in a while, and you and I talk about a lot about their their art style. It's it's pixel graphics, but kind of has like this neon glow effect on top of everything. It looks really cool. Um, but Titan Attacks was essentially their Space Invaders game, and it was the one I had played the least. And I sunk a a couple hours into it last week, just um, playing around because. Um, we've been playing a lot of retro games in our arcade challenge, and I don't know, this just kind of scratched the scratched the same itch. And um, I was just discovering little things that they they added to kind of change that Space Invaders uh, formula, and um, it's pretty cool. It's just um, there's just something something to each level. Like one of the little effects that I love is randomly when you shoot down one of the aliens, he'll instead of just blowing up in place, he'll kind of fall to his death. And you can get a bonus if you shoot him again, or <laughs> nice. or the little alien that's driving the sh- the big ship that looks like an alien, he'll bail out and parachute, and you can catch him and capture him and get bonus points. And so there's just like little touches like that that um, you know add to your score and add to the challenge and just keep keep things a little bit more randomized um, than feeling like just a straight up Space Invaders game. But nice. All of their games are super easy to get into, and they all look great. They're they're fun to play. They're pretty simple, pretty cheap. Um, so, uh, have you played any of those games? Uh, I played a little bit of Titan Attacks. I got it with a humble bundle a, a while back, and I thought I had a really cool art style. Um, Music I've always meant to pick up Ultratron. I should have bought that. Ultratron's that awesome. I don't, I don't know why I didn't, but uh, but yeah, I haven't played too much of it. But I do. I love the art style of those games. <laughs> I'll probably I'll probably pick the rest of them up at some point. Well, I I, I can't make this promise to you, but I am going to give away a couple. <laughs> I, I bought a couple extra copies of that the Puppet Games bundle, so I'll be giving those away on the podcast next week. So um, tune in, check out Horrible Night um, for some details on how we're going to do that. But it'll definitely I be... won't take one. We can leave them <laughs> for the fans. All right. I can. How nice of you? I'll, I'll buy my own games. <laughs> I'm gonna, rich. Wasn't gonna give it to you anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> um, games of the week from chat. Uh, Aaron's been playing a lot of Teleglitch. Uh, I kind of talked about that with him on Night Force this week. That the game, you know, it looks really retro and actually kind of looks like crap, but he swears that it's fun to play. So <laughs> I thought it looked awesome. I watched a couple trailer videos on it. it yeah, it I don't looks, know. It, it looks it, cool. I think I I don't I think I wanted to write it off. I feel like an asshole, but that was, um, but I was glad to glad to see somebody gave it a reasonable shot. So I'll have to check that I out. I want to play it. It's going to be good. Uh, Cole's game of the week is Witcher Two, which I still need to get into. But how, I don't know how you play that game in Skyrim at the same time. That's kind of my my problem. Um, Adeline, sorry if I got your if I mispronounced your name, uh, but thanks for submitting. She's pl- been playing a lot of Resident Evil, uh, especially Resident Evil Six. So I think that game's finally come down to the price point where it's worth playing. And if you know what you're getting into, um, it's got plenty of over the top moments that uh, I'm sure it's fun. And Verdian has been just blowing through all of the Half Life Two content. He beat. He just finished Half Life Two and has started Episode One. And uh, we'll be heading after episode two, so. He got through that fast. Because <laughs> Half-Life 2 is a long game, isn't it? I feel I, like it's pretty long. I never finished it, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I didn't either, but I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's long. How long I wonder, does it take you, V? I wonder what's, uh, what's driving driving the Half-Life 2. I, 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 can't, I can't play that now, because all I'll want is episode three or Half-Life 3 by the time I finish it. So... Like I don't want to stir that back up in my brain. It's, well, it's with a, your track record on finishing games, oh, by the time you do finish all of them, <laughs> it might be out. My track record with like finishing, like retro, like older games, is better than my track record of finishing new games. So you never know. I could finish that before I finish Bioshock Infinite. So yeah, I've uh, actually kind of wanted to go back and play the old Half Life games again. I was going to start with one though. Yeah, I wonder how that. Oh, play the Black Mesa mod. Yeah, like they've kind of like oh, redone yeah. it in source, so yeah, I should um, do that. And then Jordan's game is the last remnant, um, but he played that a little bit. Thinks it's a little too hard, and he doesn't really understand what's going on. So I think that's a <laughs> PlayStation Three game. Um, HorribleNight.com highlights. Uh, what do you like on the site? 
I like that stop motion Donkey Kong video. That was fucking um, crazy. It was crazy. I mean, I've played around with stop motion before, and we've, you know, I worked at a previous job where one of the guys did a stop motion video, and just knowing how much work goes into it and how long it takes, like that guy, he had it down. I mean, it. I felt like you know we had that Donkey Kong week at work on our mm-hmm. arcade machine, and you know watching his video, it looked exactly like yeah. it would look if you play the game. I mean, that dude, that dude spent some time on it. It, well, was, not it only, was pretty impressive. You know, he 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 lays out all the what oh, he used the perler beans <clears throat> to build out the level and the characters, and he starts to animate it and does the you know the traditional uh, Donkey Kong level, the first level that everybody thinks of. But the fact that he went ahead and did the level two and three and and continued to play it out, just yeah. I was like, what? I mean, that was just a I I all I see when I see stop motion animation is just the amount of time that has to go into that, and it blows oh, my mind. And I the know. animation was smooth. It was it was cool. And it was good. He, it, he did a really good job. And I it always I actually get jealous when I watch videos like that because I never finish anything that I do. Like, yeah. I don't finish songs that I write. I don't finish game ideas that I say I'm going to build. Um, and then you see somebody who just wants to make Donkey Kong out of stop motion, and he does. And it's I, I get jealous that he yeah. found the time to do that. I'm going to say I would have started that project and, like, finished Mario's face, like, with the perler beads yeah. and stopped there and taken a picture of it and said, isn't this kind of cool? <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, I, I might have done enough for him to walk across the bottom, and then I would be like, screw this. <laughs> <laughs> You're already getting called out in chat for not finishing Dark Souls. so. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, worst of the week. Um, I'll start us off with a Nintendo kind of just released their quarterly sales figures and that sort of thing. and um, the The big news was just how bad the Wii U was doing. Like, we all know it's doing bad, but just, like, these numbers are just, like, it's dead on arrival type of numbers. But they posted, like, a a profit or higher than they expected because the 3DS is taken off again, and it's doing so well. And, like, I think Animal Crossing sold, like, 2 million copies. So (laughs) That's ridiculous. So what? But what it kind of brought to light was Nintendo is just purely focusing on the 3DS and... Um, so why it's my worst of the week is just, that's just kind of a sad transition and a sad reality. Cause I don't, I really don't know. I, I mean, the Wii U can't rebound at this point. It's just looking at the games they have coming out. The fact that they're going to try to sell Wind Waker HD for full price of 50 or 60 bucks, um, is just little missteps like that. You just kind of wonder what are they going to do with the Wii U, but they kind of don't have to worry about it if the 3DS is doing well. Cause Hell, you've okay. seen. I I bring my 3ds in the office just to, on the off chance that I have some downtime that um, I can play some Animal Crossing. But um, I don't know. I don't know where Nintendo's going. Yeah, I mean, I think I think people might start buying it if they they need to just price drop it and take a huge loss on the system just to get people to pick it up and you know try and try and make some money on some of the games that they're going to release, which. You know, I'd I'd play the Nintendo exclusive games, but I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna pay full price for that console just for their games. But if it was, you know, 150, 200 bucks, yeah, I, mean, I, I might think get one. They have to do a price drop with how it's gonna be priced against like PlayStation Four. Yeah, and um, but I guess there there's no reason to drop it now because the game their next batch of games aren't out yet. But when they yeah. get a couple games out, I'd be surprised if they don't drop it pretty here pretty yeah. quick yeah once the ps4 and xbox come out i mean it's, it needs to price drop with you know what the ps3s and original 360 are, yeah. are going for um we've got some commonality here to um some of our worst of the week so I'll, i'm gonna pick around that before getting to yours uh, but aaron <laughs> his worst of the week is the reaction to <laughs> polygon's dragon crown dragon's crown review um, they kind of they were pretty hard on the game, and I don't know. Like this game has such a. I, I love Vanillaware. I love their their art style, but they have just gone over the top with their character designs and the bo- the boobs in this game are just. It's at the point where I I won't be able to seriously play it in front of other people. Like it's like it's like already a game of shame, and I know that it's going to 
like aside from the aesthetics, it's going to play great. And uh, but Polygon still kind of struggled with it. So um, you know when when a review comes out that people really disagree with, they're going to rail into them. And Polygon seems to be kind of a, a beacon for that lately. Um, Verdian called out the new trailer for Watch Dogs, which I had you watch before we got on. What was your your reaction to that thing? Uh, was that really a trailer? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I kind of laughed when that lady got run over. Anything else but stand out? Not really. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't really sure what was going on. So the trailer was to just... Sh- I think it was to show off that Aisha Tyler, who does all the Ubisoft press com- E3 press conferences, she's in the game, and they were just showing basically um, another example of your character can tell when people are in danger and she ends up getting run over by a truck. But when I watched it, that like at first time I my reaction was, are we watching the current gen version of this? Because everything they've shown is the next gen version yeah. of Watch Dogs. But this is also coming out for PS3 and That's 360. That's true. It didn't it The didn't graphics look, look like shit. They did. It looked pretty bad. To the point... Now that you mentioned that, I, I did notice that. To the point when I watched it after Verdian posted this for us, the that I was reading the comments, and all the comments were saying that it was a Grand Theft Auto 4 mod. And like I, I was <laughs> until I read up on it, I was actually kind of convinced that that might be the case. But uh, yeah. upon further review, basically the the director of the game said that um, there was just a, a, a glitch in that export as far as the the guy that was rendering it didn't have some settings, and it just you know this one happened to get by their QA and all that stuff. And don't worry, the game doesn't look like this basically. So, but it made it all the way out to like an official trailer release, and it. It looks like shit. It's the first thing I've seen that looks like shit from Watch Dogs, so that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and Cole, you, uh, and Cole, Jordan, and yourself all have the same worst of the week. Why don't you take it from here? My worst of the week is Phil Fish. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's no secret that he's kind of a dick. I mean, anybody who's who's watched any game the movie like i didn't know much about him before that i knew i knew of fez but i didn't know i didn't know the whole story behind fez i didn't know how long it had been in development i didn't know who phil fish was and i watched the movie and i was like man that guy is he's such an asshole (laughs) um and i really didn't like him by the end of the game but you know i he knows he is yeah and that's cool that he acknowledges it i think that maybe makes it not quite as bad and after watching these special features, you know, it's you, you just you just kind of get used to okay, that's who Phil Fish is. It's okay, um, but he's just he's very reactive, and I I think that he puts on a lot of it to benefit himself because there is one um, clip in the special edition extras that they just released where he's uh, reacting to. All the or to the Japan incident where he totally railed that Japanese developer and said that you know modern Japanese games suck, and uh, he was like, you know, people are are mad at me on the internet. It's all over the internet. And he goes, but I'm okay with that because because there's all kinds of assholes out there. But you know, I matter enough that people are talking about me, and that's cool. So he kind of had a little smirk when he said that too. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's kind of like. You know, he's. I, I feel like at this point he's putting on a show now because he gets a reaction from it. Now, and, now, bef- before I started talking to you about that, like I was totally, you know, so the the news from this weekend is basically the Twitter explosion between him and whoever runs Annoyed Gamer. I forget the dude's name. I don't care. Yeah. Um, get into a Twitter fight to the point where Phil just says, "All right, that's it. I'm I'm done. Fest Two is canceled." Um, you know, I just can't deal with this shit anymore. It's just too much. And so, I mean, basically, I think that happened probably midday or early Saturday. And I didn't, you know, check social media or my news feeds till later that day. And it's just like all anybody was talking about. And, yeah. you know, at first I was just like, my, my initial reaction at that point was that he was being honest, that he's just kind of, um, he, he is reactive that way. And he would cancel the game. 
But at the same time, I was like, I know that I don't think that'll stick. But no. since you and I talked, um, and then I kind of go back and I just look, you know, the fact that his Twitter icon still continues to be Andy Kaufman, and um, you kind of brought up the fact that you know this this is happening at a very convenient time because indie game the movie special edition just came out yeah and it's just bringing all that attention back and yeah it's uh, like i feel like he hasn't had an outbreak in a while and the fact that all this happens like a week after special edition releases just seems like too much of a coincidence to me yeah but uh because i even saw a few some of the guys i follow on twitter you know we're talking about it and one of the guys is like I need to go watch Indie Game the movie now. So I think there were <laughs> maybe people that never watched the movie and now they're wanting to go back and check it out. So I was like, see, that's that's exactly what he wanted you to do. And that's and, my take. And he it. was also so. talking up, I mean, it was hilarious when he was talking up his trading cards um, yeah. related to the movie. And um, it it all, yeah, it just all ended up being a promotion for the whole thing. And uh, I don't know, I've come, I've come around to thinking that, yeah, this was all, this was all planned. And um, now he can actually probably now go work on this game in peace and just peek his yeah. head out when he's actually ready to show something rather than I know he wasn't looking forward to dealing with the when is the game coming out types of conversations so yeah um, because I mean if you watch the movie I mean he put a lot of work into that game and you don't do that unless you really like it and if you like it that much you wouldn't just give up that easily I don't think I mean especially as, as successful as Fez was I mean I'm sure he's doing all right for himself with his game sales um you know he's he's gonna keep going you don't yeah i don't think you just give that up i think everybody no one really believes that fez 2 is is completely dead like it you know but it's everybody's kind of torn on is he has he stopped working on it is it never going to come out versus i think the other side of people think that this is serious but he'll come back around someday so yeah I'll be curious to see how that evolves, but man, that was that was all the internet was doing this weekend. It seemed like so. Um, that ties a little bit into your best of the week in gaming. You want to talk about the special edition a little bit more? Yeah. So, hey, special edition came out like a week ago. <laughs> um, I, I actually really like that movie. You know, we saw it at the at the indie film fest, um, and it, I, it was like both inspiring and depressing as a game developer. Um, but what was really cool about the special edition was they, most of the videos were taken because the, the the original movie is basically the development up to the release of their game and then like their initial reactions. But the special edition is full of a lot of video from after the fact. So they kind of had, you know, little one-on-one segments with each person and, you know, Hey, how has your life changed since the success of Super Meat Boy or, uh, Fez and, and you know, seeing that side of it, it it was actually a lot more uplifting than because you, know, you you kind of finished watching indie game and um it was it was kind of depressing. Yeah. But you know, watching these extra videos, it, it was definitely a lot more positive. And you know, it's like Tommy, for instance, he's like, well, you know, not much has really changed, but I own three cars. <laughs> yeah. He goes, yeah, I, I never had a car, but now I own three and. <laughs> You know, my mom's car broke down, and I bought them a new one and drove it to their house, basically. So, you know, is is just just seeing that side of it is definitely a lot more inspiring. So it's like, oh yeah, see, look, they're yeah, they're doing, yeah. doing all right for themselves. I I can I, go do this now. I think you nailed it because I when I was looking back on Indie Game the movie, and I think we talked about this before we knew the special edition was coming out. I never wanted to watch it again because yeah. it's such a downer. Yeah. Um, what unless you want to just cut out the Super Meat Boy parts because that's uplifting and Edmund's yeah. fun. Edmund McMillan's fun. Um, but these extra, I mean, how they've added like two, three, four hours. I don't know of of, it was, of behind it was the quite scenes a bit. extra stuff. It's, a couple hours at least. So they reshot epilogues for all the developers, and then there's just a ton of behind the scenes stuff, and all of that stuff has been much more uplifting and just change my perspective on the whole thing. I was like, if I watch this as a whole, this is a much more interesting and up and positive experience rather than the movie itself is just kind of like, holy shit, these guys just threw their lives into it. And I don't know if 
they're technically all of them are technically sane just the way that yeah. like they all came across as like um not all of them most of them came across as um oh shit i forgot the word for they, they don't like sociopaths <laughs> basically yeah. so um but this is it, it's what like 14 15 bucks on steam right now and uh the the DLC, the special edition DLC, is just it's it's worth the the price of admission, even if you've seen the movie. Yeah, and they even they because I don't I don't know if everybody who watched the movie knew this, but they they shot a lot more games than what they featured in the movie, and mm-hmm. a a few of those are in the special edition. So you saw a little bit on Spelunky and um, a couple other little little games that you could tell from watching those clips that the story wasn't as interesting or as epic as you know, the three that they chose to focus on, but it was still kind of cool just to see little splashes of a couple other games that you recognize. Yep. It's, it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, especially if you're a, if you're a game developer or, you know, you want to know like about any of, or you like any of those games. I mean, just, I mean, we saw it with a, a group of people and I think it also opened up, um, a lot of them to what actually goes on in game development and kind of humanize the game development story a bit for, uh, people, you know, just thought it was nerds writing code kind of thing. And uh, I, I just, I saw that as, if you're interested in game development and want to, like, open that up to anybody else, this movie's great for that. So, um, Aaron's best of the week is the Bioshock Infinite DLC update. Um, everybody seems to be ready for the the two-story uh, packs that are coming out later, but he, he did play a little bit of the... Uh, the the horde mode edition basically the the wave based content I thought it was cool that they announced this update and then but in or and start off by releasing uh, this arena shooting part yeah. it, at least they released something with the announcement so I yeah I I tried it out too um, I was definitely you know I'm more interested in the story side of it and was kind of not that excited about the uh what they released but it's you know it's kind of fun it's not yeah. bad it's it's um, it, it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's it's you just feel like you're in another one of the battle scenes within the game so it's i don't know if i'll play a lot of it but right right you know playing a couple rounds is is a good time i also kind of realize that when i see wave based shooters like that that i want them multiplayer i don't like playing those alone <laughs> yeah but. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it kind of made me think of Horde a little bit. Like, oh, yeah, I haven't played much Horde in a while. It made me want to play that. Cole's best of the week is the Deep Silver Humble Bundle that's going on right now. So if somehow, for some reason, you haven't bought Saints Row 3, that's that's out there. I'll, also, Dead I- the Dead Island games and Saints Row 2, and uh, I believe there's a little bit more in there. But that's the next Humble Bundle. Um Adeline, like I said, she's playing Resident Evil 6 uh, and has just really discovered her Resident Evil addiction. So <laughs> I think we, we have a lot of Resident Evil fans on Horrible Night, so enjoy yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> for Dean's Best of the Week, so it's kind of related in the game the movie, but the Team Meat guys, the team behind Super Meat Boy, posted, <laughs> they recorded a <laughs> phone call with a douchebag that was trying to trick them into giving him money to write Super Meat Boy the movie. And it was so transparent that they just decided to record the entire phone call and kind of bait him into, like, basically telling them that he knew nothing about their game. And it's, like, a 50-minute phone call, but hilarious if you know these guys and know (laughs) Super Meat Boy at all. Um, And... Yeah, they're not they're not serious about making a Super Meat Boy movie, and um, but man, this guy basically wanted them to give him money to write the script, and like pay him like twelve thousand dollars, and it was just a, I, I'm glad they captured that and shared that with the world because that's hilarious. Nice. Yeah, I need um, to check that out. Jordan's best of the week is actually his the same as his worst of the week. Um, at that it's Phil Fish, but also that he kind of likes now that the game industry has idols and um even though who publicly break down just like the music and movie industry so (laughs) take the good with the bad (laughs) (laughs) 
My best of the week is Square Enix just announced that they are planning to do Tomb Raider for the next-gen consoles. So, I think you and I both really like the latest Tomb Raider game. And, oh, yeah. But Square Enix has just been so weird lately with kind of bashing... They, they, they kind of bash Sleeping Dogs and Tomb Raider as far as like just underperforming sales-wise when... They both they both move millions and millions of copies and seem to do quite well, and I was kind of worried that Square Enix was just gonna squash squash it because it seems like ever since they acquired IDOS, all of IDOS's like developed games are the only things keeping Square afloat when Final Fantasy can, keeps falling on its face. So I was kind of fearful that Square would just be blind to that fact and squash these next games and of of the more their actual successful franchises and uh glad to see they got their head out of the ass and are going to yeah. continue doing more tomb raider yeah no, that tomb raider game was really good i'm really curious to see what 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 they do with it from here because they've yeah well they you know they finally rebuilt that that laura character and um it can go a lot of places now i want i just want tomb raider game with a lot of tomb raiding this next time so yeah that that was the only thing i thought was interesting is you could get through the whole game without really even doing the tombs um so it was very much an action game yeah which i i didn't play too much of the old ones but you know it seemed like it maybe strayed from the original formula a little more yeah but but i if it's establishing the the new yeah. the new direction i i'll give it that pass but yeah hopefully they um do something a little bit more traditional next time with but I can't wait to see how that game looks on the next gen too so <laughs> alright finally um, before we get out of here two questions for you Coop since we've been battling in Super Meat Boy and Trials Evolution what do you think our next leaderboard game is going to be hmm I'd have to look and see what games we have that have leaderboards. Am I going to be able to um, trick you into playing Spelunky? I, yeah, I'll play Spelunky. And that game's going to have daily challenges. Is where... um, It's only on Xbox, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming out with P- for PC in August, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, yeah, if they come out with a PC version. And so they're going to have these daily challenges where um, you get to try whatever the challenge is once a day. And it's oh. like, so you get one attempt, and as soon as you die, it'll like record your score, or how far you got, and compare that with friends. So, um, maybe maybe a better question for you then is, uh, what do you think your next game you're going to play just because you want to get the Steam trading cards? We're playing Binding of Isaac now. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm pretty close on I'm pretty close on Super Meat Boy. Well, I'm not really pretty close on Super Meat Boy, but I started getting some of those. So if I can, if I can keep motivated by that, I might try it. Let me look real quick at what my others. Um, I might be doing a bit trip runner too. I it's kind of mindless. <laughs> yeah, I actually almost have all the trading cards for Worms Revolution. I could probably get that. Oh, maybe I'll do Counter Strike. I have some global offensive trading cards. Have we? Um, can we at least come to the gentleman's agreement that we're we're not going to just leave the game on to get cards? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's cheating. I'm holding everybody in chat to that as well. So yeah, we will not leave games running unless you want to leave the games running and then give us the cards. Then we that's can talk. true. Yeah, <laughs> chat can do that if they if they just want to leave their games running and give us the cards. Or you me, can give the them cards. all to me. For that. <laughs> um. <laughs> um but yeah, no, actually, well, I'm playing a lot of Sleeping Dogs. That might be my next one I finish. Although I don't have any card drops left. Some of these are hard to get all the cards. Yeah, yeah. Like Kal- Kalawaras has nine, but they only give you four. And since yeah. nobody else I know plays that game. I'll play it. I need to play that game. So that'll drive some of our Game of the Week discussions, I'm sure. So we need to have another rule, too. So no leaving it open and no spending real money on cards. Yes. You can sell cards and use that money to buy cards, but you can't actually spend real money on cards. I think what's going to be get hairy is when I actually put money into the Steam wallet for something else. Yeah. Like, 
Um, you know, what if I fall down the Dota hole and I want to buy a costume for my character and it ends up going to the Steam wallet? But so far, I've been yeah. just using my credit card or, or PayPal for most of my Steam purchases. But if I start to add money to that Steam wallet, that's where I'm basically keeping my trading yeah. card money. So, um, well, what, I, what I've been doing, because I, yeah, I had that. The problem I'm having is I had a little bit of money in my Steam wallet and then I sold some stuff. And then I'll go and buy a game and forget that it automatically takes all my Steam wallet money first. <laughs> Maybe there's a setting you can change so that doesn't yeah. happen. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I need to go buy this trading card. And then I look and I don't have the No, balance. I think you're right. Yeah, you're right. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to empty yeah. that. and then Because like, I, I, that just happened to me today. I was going to buy the last Binding of Isaac card that I needed. And now, and, you, now you have to put 16 real cents back into your Steam yeah. wallet. <laughs> so I, what I did is I, I went and sold another card so I could get it. So... So yeah, that's that's kind of a pain. <laughs> I'm but glad we're making having, rules, though. Yeah. So I, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm probably not going to sell things until I'm ready to buy them. Because you can actually... I mean, unless you're trying to get a lot more than the average, they sell really fast. Like yeah. Every card I've posted, if you post it at like the lowest price or one or two cents above, like it sells within a half hour almost yep. every time. That's, so, that's my experience, too. So Yeah. Cool. As long as I keep getting dumb emoticons, I'll I'll be happy too. <laughs> yeah. So I just got a heart. The binding wise the heart. I like I'll how send... I, I just got the Borderlands two logo. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what, know what you're supposed what, to do with any of them. What emotion does that convey? <laughs> <laughs> I have one that looks like it's an egg McMuffin. <laughs> it's 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 called like the Tommy special. I don't, maybe I don't That's remember awesome. if he references the sandwich in the movie or something, but. Yeah, it looks like. Um, an that, egg I mean, but I could attach that to an emotion. I was yeah. like, "It's like, man, I really wish I had an egg McMuffin," and then put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for top video game podcast of the week. Chat, thanks for hanging out with us. Coop, thanks for jumping on. Hey, no problem. We'll be back next week with another episode. We'll see you. See you. <laughs>